Gojo sometimes acts like a child, and sometimes like an 80 year old man. His demeanor, his expressions, everything about him is so volatile, it's incomprehensible as to what his character really is, despite the main gist that he is an oblivious fool, no matter which way you look at it. Despite his conventional intelligence, that's not what makes him foolish. It's his actions and intentions towards things. He's never serious, and it's because of the power he's been gifted with. This power has made him a fool. Truth be told, Gojo perceives life without a serious disposition. It's like a game he plays. So why does Gojo never have a serious attitude? Well, the fool is a person who does the opposite of what people expect. Someone dies, they laugh. An exam in the next three days and they're excited. The emotions are reversed and it's what is known as a fool. A person we cannot understand because they are so oblivious, so foolish, that they inherently adopt naivety that guides them throughout life. A naivety so strong and intense that one could not begin to surmise such an actuality. Sometimes it stems as a coping mechanism, but it also stems as a belief of a way of living. The path of a fool is not bright and is one covered in segregation, as humans discriminate against what is unknown to them. No mistakes, previous failures, or knowledge will help one know what a fool is about. That's why it draws on the fear that humans have. An emotional roller coaster, uncontrollable, irrational thoughts are within the deepest crevices of human nature. It is a part of all of us, the fool, and it chooses whether to reveal itself or not, depending on your own beliefs about yourself. It's only recognizable when you unsheath those hidden desires, which is what Gojo does. Considering his power is so massive, it grants him the ability to act foolish, and ironically it fits Gojo's character to a T, but at the same time, holds some sort of natural attraction to those that are different from the conventional person. Why is it so? Is it because we see indifference as a positive? A rarity of sorts? Or does being different in a good way weed you out and expose who you truly are? Well, to expand upon the fact that Gojo is different, he obviously isn't by choice, but by circumstance. This circumstantial indifference is what creates his identity as an enigma within the show Jujutsu Kaisen, a figure of sorts. Whether it is one of justice or not his natural inclination is to rectify himself as some sort of untouchable ideal, which is precisely why he is a fool. This misunderstanding, this inconsequential right to have an excessive amount of power enables Gojo the ability to situate his foolish nature into any moment, during battle, during conversation or interaction with other characters, or just simply existing. It's this mystification as to what Gojo actually symbolizes that he acts foolish towards. Not knowingly, this is a crucial part of his identity, who he is, why he even exists in the first place. It is to serve as a pillar of intimidation towards the injustice of the world. His birth was not a symbol of luck, but preordained destiny, happening to be a defense mechanism the world had against the discrimination between humans and cursed spirits. Who is better? Why is there even an argument? Well, Gojo precedes these expectations by proposing the synchronistic lifestyle, which is why he even fights in the first place. It's for the sake of his purpose, his initial fulfillment, not out of choice or free will. The six eyes grant him foresight into his own path, which he acknowledges as the universal truth. This is further elaborated upon as his attacks represent enlightenment and in combining two truths to synthesize a new, greater, and more knowledgeable version of himself. Gojo's identity is shaped around this fact, his domain expansion symbolic of it, the path to unending knowledge, his satisfaction with life. By definition, Gojo cannot be considered an enigma. He is just who he is because of why he is. The environment, culture, and even his mindset were not controlled by his own will, and is why I personally think Gojo is a depiction into what we all truly desire as a collective. Gojo, after realizing the fruitlessness of his own existence seeks to derive it from others, whether that be teaching and distilling knowledge to Kunigami, Megami or Isidori, he learns to appreciate the novelty of life, instead of worrying about the individual things he cannot control. Gojo in this sense develops and undergoes transformative journeys towards his own enlightenment by himself. Nobody will truly understand Gojo as Gojo is the only one to know himself. He is so different that even his students describe him as an anomaly. But despite this, Gojo still possesses a stark understanding of relationships and their importance. Even though metaphorically he will never be related to, he can still form invaluable relationships, one being him and Ghetto. 
He may have been relating to Ghetto for the shred of competition there was seemingly between the both of them, but as Gojo understood his own godly status, began to grow more distance from Ghetto, and soon they split paths in a disagreement of ideologies. Despite all these facts and what we know of Gojo, he continues to defy expectations and is possibly one of the most deep characters ever created in fiction. I have to commend the absolute sheer perfection that is Gojo. I mean, one can simply not understand Gojo by just watching the show. You have to dedicate time for his character, which I really respect. This man both symbolically defies our interpretations and literally defies the laws of physics with his own powers, which is why it's actually so hard to gauge his character and what he is truly about. In the end, I think this is possibly, if not why, Gojo Satoru is the strangest character in anime. If you really liked the video, don't forget to leave a like, sub, comment as always, and PEACE!